O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, purchased for us the rewards of eternal life, grant, we beseech thee, that meditating upon these mysteries in the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise. Today's collect for the Most Holy Rosary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The last verse of the 11th chapter of the Apocalypse of St. John speaks of Our Lady, the Ark of the Covenant being in heaven, and how there are voices issuing from the sacred precincts of heaven, from the temple. We read in the 11th chapter, And the temple of God was opened in heaven, And the ark of his testament was seen in his temple. And there were lightnings and voices and an earthquake and great hail. Voices from heaven have been heard many times in the history of the church. Among which is the most sweet voice of the ark of the covenant itself. That of our blessed mother. In 1208... She came and spoke thus to the great Saint Dominic, founder of the Dominican order. Wonder not that until now you have obtained so little fruit by your labors. You have spent them on a barren soil, not yet watered with the dew of divine grace. When God willed to renew the face of the earth, he began by sending down on it the fertilizing rain of the angelic salutation. Preach my Psalter composed of 150 angelic salutations, that's the Hail Mary, and 15 Our Fathers, and you will obtain an abundant harvest. Words of Our Lady to St. Dominic, the Ark of the Covenant Our Lady assumed into heaven came and she spoke words of comfort and gave St. Dominic the Holy Rosary. Many works of art for hundreds of years have expressed this reality. Pope Pius XI called this chapel in which this happened the cradle of the rosary, the birthplace of the rosary. What is more, this fact has been repeatedly verified by 39 separate popes and 214 papal pronouncements. Among them, blessed Pope Pius IX, Leo XIII, and Pius XI all declared that the rosary originated with St. Dominic. Wow. In 1917, the gracious lady of the rosary from heaven came at Fatima with lightnings and thunder. She spoke thus several times, I want you to say the rosary every day. Or... Continue to say the rosary every day in honor of Our Lady in order to obtain peace for the world and the end of war because only she can obtain it. Only she can help you. Let's go back a little. On February 18, 1858, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared just outside of Lourdes, France, in the grotto near the River Gave. This was her third appearance and the first at which she spoke to St. Bernadette. The most beautiful lady who heretofore has always appeared on the upper niche of the grotto now moves a little closer to Bernadette. She moves out to the edge of the niche. The little girl asks her name and the lady replies, Would you do me the favor of coming here for a fortnight? Bernadette readily agrees what heaven this would be. And the lady replies, I do not promise to make you happy in this world, but in the next. And then she disappears. Starting with this visit, we should note carefully how the number of successive visits to the grotto is 15. The same as the mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary. Our Lady's Psalter of 150 Hail Marys is divided into 15 decades, each representing a mystery of our blessed Lord and His Mother, as the collect indicated. Mysteries of life, death, and resurrection. 
Amazingly, what happens in these 15 days at Lourdes parallels in some way what occurred in the corresponding mystery of the rosary. Not only did St. Bernadette pray the rosary at each visit to the grotto, but even acted out each mystery in some little way as the days passed. Now let us consider a few of the days and their points of contact. Okay, so 15 days for 15 decades of the rosary. Each day is going to align with that mystery. It's corresponding mystery. So the first day, the first day matches up nicely with the Annunciation. A heavenly being comes down to earth to a virgin girl of 14 and asks her if she would say yes, fiat, to God's plan for her and her people. She said yes. The heavenly being adds that this yes will not be easy, but bring much trial and tribulation. But nevertheless, the little virgin Bernadette will triumph and be crowned in the end by going to heaven. Does this not parallel in some way what Our Lady experienced so long ago with the visit of St. Gabriel, the archangel? Does it not match up beautifully? On the second day, an echo of the visitation occurred when St. Bernadette fell into a deep rapture upon reaching the grotto. All noticed the beauty that shone upon the little girl's face. Her countenance changed. Her smile became mysteriously lovely. People wept at the sight. In this visitation to the grotto, the first of which her own mother was present, Bernadette's whole being proclaimed the greatness of the Lord. A further interest at this second day is how a mob of devils tried to interfere with things from the river Gav. A mere glance, however, from the Immaculate Conception positioned in the niche above reduced the demons to silence. Surely this is an echo of how the devil lost his grip upon the forerunner of our Lord, St. John the Baptist, when he was baptized in the womb at the visitation of Our Lady. The devil is powerless against our sovereign queen. As the 12th chapter of the Apocalypse says of the devil, he tries to use water to drown out the virgin queen and the child born of her, but is not successful. With Jesus in her womb, the virgin mother of God became a mother to men of this world with her visitation to Elizabeth. St. John the Baptist is born through her into the life of grace. She became the mother of men. The devil is angry. Is not an echo of this mystery resounding at the grotto in Lourdes on the second day? On the fourth day, a mirror of the presentation in the temple shone forth when the Immaculate Lady looked up into the distance and showed signs of deep sorrow, saying, pray to God for sinners. She was seeing something going on in the distance. Perhaps she saw Charles Darwin preparing his works on evolution to be published within a year. Or maybe it was... Karl Marx, working on his Das Kapital. At the sight of her sadness, Bernadette could not help shedding tears. Does this not call to mind that first sword that pierced Our Lady's immaculate heart so long ago in the temple before the aged Simeon? That her son would be a sign of contradiction? Later that day, St. Bernadette had to give a serious presentation of the happenings at the grotto to the city officials. Herod was already looking for the infant king. On the fifth day, Our Lady did not appear. She wanted the little virgin to feel as she had felt when Jesus was lost to her for three days. The Stabat Mater a beautiful sequence of Our Lady of Sorrows that we sing at the Stations of the Cross, says, make me feel as you have felt. Make me feel as you have felt. 
Saint Bernadette felt the loss keenly and was almost inconsolable. Our Lady also plainly displayed here that she is not called down from heaven on demand as so many false modern apparitions would have us believe. But rather, she, the sovereign queen, decides when she will appear. On the sixth day, aligned with the agony in the garden, St. Bernadette converses and watches with the lady for one hour. Can you not watch one hour with me? She received a secret that caused her great sorrow. On the seventh day, the scourging at the pillar, Our Lady told the Virgin Bernadette to do penance, penance, penance. Pray to God for sinners. Kiss the ground as an act of penance for sinners. On the eighth day, the crowning with thorns, the Immaculate Queen had her victim soul, Bernadette, dig for the hidden waters of the Lord's grotto and eat some of the vegetation there. After finding the place and washing and drinking of the muddy water, as well as eating the herbs, her obedience became a crowning of thorns. After seeing her behavior in muddy face, she was roundly attacked and rejected by nearly everyone present. She is out of her mind. She is mad, the people exclaimed, and jeered at her all the way to her home. A crowning with thorns. To add to Bernadette's concerns, her most beautiful lady did not appear the next day. Bernadette had to carry her cross with the Lord, of whom the Psalms say he looked for comforters but found none. She was alone. Yet the stream of healing waters was now beginning to flow freely. On the ninth day, the crucifixion, after St. Bernadette had washed and drank from the waters of the grotto, which were now flowing more freely than ever, as well as performing other acts of penance, she was commanded to go and tell the priest to have a chapel built here. Just as the new Eve, the church, the bride of Christ, was born out of the side of the new Adam, Jesus Christ, as he slept in death upon the cross, his side being opened with a lance from which flowed blood and water, the very life of the church. So now a little echo, a little echo of this is heard in this. Have a chapel built here. Living waters were there. Healing waters. And now there are many more points of contact that we could go through. Many more points of contact that could be said of the remaining days. Processions and the silence of the crowds as Bernadette was vindicated in all her actions. Just as those of Jerusalem were silenced by the events of the glorious mysteries that followed the crucifixion. I think you see the point. And so I will leave these to your study and meditations. My purpose in bringing up these things is to show the wonderful ways of God and His Blessed Mother. How edifying and awe-inspiring are the apparitions at Lord's. There are many things there that need to be considered. But also, it is clear how these 15 days of Lord's are an unequivocal affirmation of the 15 decade rosary. Each day the rosary was prayed. Each day one of its mysteries was manifested on a sort of divine stage. There were divine actors present. Those who had hearts and minds open to God were enraptured and converted. Now in the year 2002, Pope John Paul II introduced a new rosary with his letter, Rosarium Virginis Mariae. We could call it the Rosary of John Paul II. He added an extra decade and five new mysteries, the luminous mysteries, they're called. In other words, he established a 20-decade rosary. 
one that does not coincide with the 150 Psalms, nor the 15 days of Lourdes. One of his reasons for forming this new rosary, it seems, was to reach out to the Eastern Church, which does not pray the rosary very much at all, but very much appreciate the luminous mysteries. In the letter, he also did not admit the 13th century origins of the rosary of Our Lady with St. Dominic, as 39 other popes had done. I mention all this not to belittle the rosary of John Paul II, but to make it clear that if someone does not want to pray his rosary by including the luminous mysteries, they should not be held as being less than Catholic, obstinate, or against the church or the pope. No, these faithful are simply conforming themselves to the gift of the rosary, the gift that was given to us by the very voice of the Ark of the Covenant that St. John saw in heaven. And this rosary has been tried and tested to be true over centuries with the wonderful confirmation of Lourdes as we just discussed. In the introduction of his biography of Pope John Paul II, the book called Witness to Hope, George Weigel was right to quote Melchior Cano, the great Dominican theologian of the 16th century Council of Trent, who said, those who blindly and indiscriminately defend every decision of the Supreme Pontiff are the very ones who do most to undermine the authority of the Holy See. They destroy instead of strengthening its foundations. Let's repeat that. Those who blindly and indiscriminately defend every decision of the Supreme Pontiff are the very ones who do most to undermine the authority of the Holy See. They destroy instead of strengthening its foundations. I think George Weigel was right to put that in the front of his biography. We cannot defend every decision of a pope. But one more point needs to be made here. At Lourdes, if you count the beads on the rosary shown on the various statues of Our Lady of Lourdes, you will often find an extra decade. Not five decades, but six. Why is that? This extra decade was added for the poor souls in purgatory. And it was a local custom. Notice how the church has never forced this local custom upon the rest of the church. Because it's a long-standing 15-decade rosary that we've always prayed. This should stand as a good lesson to us that not only can we feel at home and at ease in saying only the 15-decade rosary or Psalter of Our Lady, but above all, that this most sweet and efficacious prayer need not become a source of division between Catholics of goodwill when the Pope attempted to establish a custom to encourage the Eastern rites in praying the rosary. It was his idea to establish a custom. It's not forced upon the church. Our orthodoxy should not rest upon whether or not we pray the luminous mysteries. Once again, the voice that came down to us through St. Dominic said, When God willed to renew the face of the earth, He began by sending down on it the fertilizing rain of the angelic salutation. Preach my Psalter, composed of 150 angelic salutations and 15 Our Fathers, and you will obtain an abundant harvest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.